Hi and welcome again to Revs IT. Okay, it's time to start work. The overalls are on, the plastic gloves are in place. It's time to start stripping the front end down. First of all, I'm going to take off the levers, uh, the brake master cylinder for the front brake, the uh, switch gear, and then we'll go on to taking off the front wheel, the caliper, and then unbolt the top. So in this video, I'm hoping to get all the front end stripped off and I may take the clocks off as well. I'm not sure yet. We'll see how it goes if I need to take them off. So let's get started. Now that's broken already. I haven't broken that. <laughs> I've only taken the top screw out, which came out perfectly, but the, the bottom is broken. So. Looks like I'm going to need a new bracket uh, for this, at least, if not a new lever. Okay, one part off. Let's just unbolt the bottom part anyway. And that's one lever free. Ha, ha, ha. I'll uh, unclip this now. If I can, that is. That is really tight. Okay, let's grab some pliers. Now, will that loosen that off? Yes. Excellent. So now we can loosen off the clutch cable. And hopefully, we can disconnect it. Perhaps I should have done this before I took it off. See, we live and we learn. We live and we learn. Okay. So, can I continue unscrewing it? Soon find out. And that's out. So, will it pop out? No. Okay. So, what I'm going to have to do then is just put it back on a second. Pull the lever. The clutch on this is so tight. There we go. So that's the lever off. I should have done that first, shouldn't I? And now we can disconnect the clutch cable completely. Looking at the cable, it looks pretty good. No frays. So it looks as if we're going to be able to keep that. Doesn't want to come out though. <laughs> really doesn't want to come out. Let's give him a little pick. See if we can tease it out. With the pick. Really, really doesn't want to come out this. Okay. Nice and loose in there, just doesn't want to come out. Hey, at last. Okay, now I know the switch on this is good, so I just need the bracket to uh, bring it up to shape. I'm going to take this off as well because I'm going to check this in the degreaser and degrease it and clean it up properly. So let's just get that off. So this is a 10 millimeter nut, not the easiest to get at. Can't get a ratchet in there, it's just too tight, or a ring spanner for that matter. Yay, the nut off. Uh, we'll just push through. What's the next question? What is that stuck as well? 
No, nope, it's actually pushing through, that's good. And there's no washers. So, keep the switch separate. And I'll put this back in here, for safekeeping. And check it into the degreaser bucket. It is quite manky, actually. Okay, that's the first one. So, we've got the first off, the clutch lever. Next, we've got to take off the switch gear here, which includes the choke, which is there. So, let's get this off. And this is going to be a Phillips screwdriver. Screw. There's no actual screw in the top there, so it should be only this one there. And because it's recessed, I can't actually get at it with that, so I'm going to have to use a longer. That's the second one screw out. And now this comes apart. So you've got the switch gear there and the clutch part there. And that's the clutch cable and actuator. So I'm just going to put this back together here. No, actually, I'll leave, that. I'll leave this uh, so I can thread it through the gap there, so I won't put this back on just yet. What I will do though is put the nuts or the bolts back in so that I don't lose them. Oh, let me think. This hand tight, it doesn't have to be tightened up. There's nothing worse than having a big box of screws and nuts and bolts and <laughs> I haven't got a clue where they're supposed to go, so I do try to put as many of them back in place as I can as I go along. Um, well, there's a wire here, which I've just found, which is taped up and looped, and I haven't got a clue what that's for, but it's, uh, it's here <laughs> alongside the main switch gear. It's none of the switch gear circuits are missing. So I only can, can presume, perhaps, there was maybe heated grips or something? I'm not sure. Anyway, we've got the choke off, we've got the clutch off, we've got the switch gear off, and uh, we're doing it well so far. Okay, onwards and upwards we go. I think I'll just take this little choke lever off as well. Okay, so this time we're taking the brake, master cylinder, and electrics off from this side. Start off with the master cylinder. That was a tight bolt. That's the two of them off. Again, I'll be putting the screws back in where they came from, so I don't lose them. Uh, there's a little wire here, which I need to unplug, and I can see now why the brake isn't working, the brake light rather isn't working, because the, the wiring is, well, it's non-existent, <laughs> it's, uh, okay, so probably that switch is working, it's just um, the actual wiring is enough, because somebody hasn't actually connected it properly. So, plus point maybe. One less job to do, one less part to buy. Next thing I want to do then is get off the wiring loom here. So again, that's a, so again, there's two screws on the back. There's one. There's two. And this comes apart. That looks to be okay. 
with a bit of throttle cable there. That's come out nice and easily. The throttle cables actually look brand new. Yeah, they're brand new cables on the throttle and then the wiring loom down there. Now, I don't know if you can see it, but that is the only connection that the brake light had. Uh, the other connection uh, just didn't have anything connected to it. So, that's that out of the way. And I'm just going to put the screws back in that so I don't lose these screws. I'm going to take the brake lever off, the master cylinder, disconnect from the brake line, and then I can slip down the caliper. The caliper's already released. Then I can dismantle the caliper, dismantle this, and see if this needs any new seals as well. Probably will, but we'll see how it goes as we do it. So first thing then, let's get this line off. Make sure I don't drop the washers. And again, what I'll do is I'll put this back on there as it came off. So now that's free. We just need to unscrew it from there. And this switch, I believe, may or may not be working. So we'll see uh, if we can dismantle that and test it. I can just test it with a, with a meter. Okay, so I've taken the lever off. It was just the one bolt to take it off. And then one little screw to take the switch off. I'm going to put the switch to the side because I'm going to test out with the meter. And now we'll open up the actual master cylinder to see what it's like inside. These little impact drivers are so useful. Makes things so much quicker. Okay, here's the test. Let's see what it's like under the cover. Uh, pretty grotty. <laughs> uh, the seal here, the rubber seal, is, I don't know if you can see that there, it's not actually making contact at all with the edge. So that hasn't been sealing. But oh, actually, the top looks a bit grungy. Ugh, yeah, definitely. But inside, it's nice and clean. And um, yeah, the seal doesn't look too bad. It's just, it hasn't been in position at all. So that needs really. To be repositioned. I might get away with that, but we'll see. Anyway, let's get this into the de degreaser and uh, get all that gunge off the top there. Okay, so I've taken the two brackets off and they're in the oil bath. I'll probably paint them black uh, when I finish. So now we're going to get the Actually, I'm going to keep this as well. I'm going to cut this straight as I can with a Stanley knife uh, because I think that's a good bit of protection uh, for the brake line. So I'll, I'll cut that off in a moment. But first of all, let's get the tube off. I'm not worried about any of this because we've got new crush washers. Now comes the bleed nipple. I've got new bleed nipples, so I will not be reusing re re those, but I'm going to wash them all the same, because it's always handy to have spares around. Into the oil bath with that. I'm going to cut this tie off that I used to tie it up while I was moving the bike around. That. Okay, so actually one of the brake pads has actually fallen out as we've been doing this. There's a little clip there, I'm going to keep that, because that, if I remember rightly, goes on the end and uh, sort of stops it slipping about. Something like that anyway. So that's one out. Can we get the other? So we're going to have to push these rods back to get the other end out. Don't worry about this. Let's get some paper to wipe up the mess. Okay, so what I've done is I've managed to push the pins back 
with the vise by just clamping it in the vise so that I can get this other shoe off. Not a lot of meat left on those, so they're going in the bin. Next, I need to get the pistons out and these pins out so that I can do them properly. Now then, what's the best way of getting these out? Let's have a little see if uh, the old hammer for would help. That one's moving. And off it comes. So I can clean all that up. And I've got new boots, so they are going as well. That's uh, it's a solid piece of metal, I think, yeah. So yeah, that's the slider. Did you see where that came from? It came from inside there. <laughs> There's little plastic inserts, apparently, inside the pistons. So let's put all this in the degreaser. Okay, so we have the pistons stuck inside the caliper. I've tried blowing air in through them to push them out, but that hasn't worked. So we're going to try something a little different and see if it works. You are going to need a socket of an appropriate size to fit inside the piston itself and to leave enough space for a hex key head. And you need, of course, a bar to turn it with. Now you should be able to, if I've calculated this right, push the hex key head in. So inserted the socket in hex key in and with quite a lot of brutal force in fact I'm going to get an extension arm you twist and turn the piston out let me just straighten that up so you can see a little better that the piston is indeed moving very slowly even with the extension bar on. But it is indeed moving. And doing it this way, of course, means that it doesn't scratch the outside of the piston. Let's check and still in focus here. And there is one piston removed. On to the next one. Okay, so now I've set it up with the different size socket head and a slightly smaller hex key for the smaller piston. Let's see if it will work again. Yes, it's moving. Very, very tight. But it is moving. And out it's coming. Slowly but surely, out it's coming. Can't even see if this is still in shot or not. Let's have a look. Yes, it is just about still in shot. Let's move it back a bit. And she's nearly there. Of course, all the seals are going to have to be renewed. And the actual piston itself, it does, it's actually not scratched at all. So it's uh, a bit of a clean up. And uh, it should be reusable. There's no, a little bit of rust there, but that surface will come off. I think these are going to be reusable. But the piston's going to have to be really, really. Uh, the caliper that is really, really well cleaned out. So that's how to get stuck pistons out of the caliper. We need to release the cable connecting there for the speedo and detach the speedo cable. So let's get those off. Eight mil. So eight mil spanner, take this one off.
It's not got nothing. Yes, it has. And I bet that's a ten meter on the other side. Yes. I'm going to take this out of here completely because I want to put this boat back in the same place. Hand tight again so it doesn't fall off. And that's that then. Next, the speedo cable. And that's disconnected. And I'll just move that cable up the way as well. Okay, so now we've got the speedometer drive out of the way. We need to loosen off the pinch bolt here. There's only one on this. Okay, does not be taken all the way out, just loosened off. Then we have to loosen this bolt, and then we do the same on the other side, loosen the pinch bolt and unscrew the axle from the other side. Or so I'm led to believe. <laughs> so see if it's right or not. Okay. So now this is uh, a 40, no sorry, a 12, 12 millimeter hex. Um, most bikes seem to have 17, uh, but I have to get a 12 for this one. Reducer. And hopefully, hopefully, this will unscrew. There we go. We'll go to the other side and do the same. Okay, so I got the bolt out from the other side. I've left the pinch bolt in over there. The calp is already removed on that side. I had to remove it because I couldn't move the bike. So it should now be that if I can remove this from here. I can take the wheel off. And there we go. That's the axle. Looks pretty good. Quite well greased. No scratches. No. Gotta get the wheel out. <laughs> right, this shouldn't be too difficult, I hope. Just go like that, and out comes the wheel. Okay, first things first, let's just get the inside. I'm going to unplug the ignition switch connector, which is here, so that that is free. And that is. And that should be all the electrics that's connected to the top. So let's get that top end off. Okay, so I am going to be taking this completely apart. So I'm going to take the handlebars off, the risers and the top yoke as well. Let's start with the handlebars. Uh, I think they're encapsulated by these little plastic grommets. So I need my pick. Where do I put my pick? I'm going to use the pick, hopefully. This will be able to ease them out. There's one. Here's two. And there's three. Let's give this a little tap of the hammer for. So it's all we're seated down. And try again. That's it. Got it. That's the two with the handlebars up. Next, we're going to detach these two, and then the main bolt. And these are 12 mil. This one. There's two. Okay, so they are off. Next is the top yoke bolt there, or nut. 
let's see what I can do with that. So we have a 27 millimeter for that one. And there we go. Off it comes. Nice. Now by my reckoning, this top yoke should now be loose enough to come off. It is moving. Just needs to loosen it up a little there, I think. So let's just open those up a little. One. Two. And off it comes. The top yoke off with the ignition. I'll dismantle that. I'll take the ignition switch off. So this can be cleaned and resprayed, and uh, just just to say to take the ignition off, it's just two more Allen keys. Now I'm not 100% sure, but when I rise it up, it may actually be loose enough to come off. I've just got to loosen two more bolts, one here, one there, and the forks should slide down. So let's do that. This time we are using 40 millimeter. Let's just double check that. Okay, never <laughs> one size. Actually, I'm going to have to lift it up a little bit to allow me to move it. So let's do that. And then we should be able to turn. There we go. It's one off. Turn it the other way, and two off. I'm hoping now, <laughs> he says, that when I lift the bike up, I'll be able to slide the forks down and out. All the wiring seems to be okay. It's not loose, out to the way. Will the forks slide out? Good question. Seem to be moving. Let's just adjust the camera so you can see what I'm doing. I'm using a rubber mallet just to tease them downwards. That's one side. And that's the other side. And at last, it's off. So that's the forks off. The headstock is next. Okay, so finally, let's just zoom in a bit. I believe all I need to do now is take off this bolt. That, rather. And, <laughs> again, tired now. And uh, the headstock should slip out to allow me access to the bearings. I've got to loosen this off now. Now, what I've got is an old socket extension, and it should, hopefully, just unwind it. Well, that was easier than I thought it was going to be. Now, is there anything else that's holding it on? Or is it all going to fall onto the floor if I take this washer off? Soon find out. That's the washer, and there comes the headstock. Okay guys, I need your help, I think. I'm just taking the uh, steering head off, and I discovered that there are races with ball bearings in this, both top and bottom. See the bottom one there? Uh, <laughs> Have I got the wrong kit? Is there an upgrade, perhaps? Um, I'll show you the kit now. Is this just an upgrade? With the roll of bearings rather than ball bearings? Or if they are an upgrade, how do I get this off? It doesn't seem to be removable. 
So any advice you can give me on this, um, I'd be most grateful down in the comments, please. And uh, we'll see. I might have to get a different bearing kit.